All right, welcome to SpaceX. Uh, here we are in the lobby. It's very white right now, but there are actually some, some cool uh, elements coming in soon that will make it less white. <laughs> In the front of the building, we have our engineering offices and, and space for about 300 people per floor, and we've got a total of about three floors that we can open. Right now, only the first floor is occupied. Um, we try to aim for something which is a very open plan uh, to maximize communication and make it sort of you know, fairly nice looking. Uh, this place used to be quite dismal. That's, that's my office over there, actually. We really try to minimize the number of offices that we have because Doors limit communication. Everyone at the company, with the exception of a few people in like HR and finance, actually um, are, are in cubes, uh, including your vice presidents over there. There's Gwen at her cube. Um. <laughs> she <laughs> <find> <laughs> coming. <laughs> Although this is really reality, I guess. I'm responsible for sales. I'm in charge of uh, making sure that uh, there's revenue here in the company. And we're working on uh, lots of Falcon 1 deals, Falcon 9 deals, and Dragon deals. So this is just a little area where people can meet and, um, and have sort of an impromptu meeting. Um, obviously also very open. Um, I think it's actually quite helpful to have this openness because then you can sort of see what people are working on on their computers. Um, <laughs> like what Matt McCune here is, is doing. Um, <laughs> what, what are you working on there? Uh, I'm making the uh, assembly documentation for the uh, Draco. Okay. RCSN. David is, is uh, driving the development of our in-space thruster, which is called Draco. Um, and um, yeah, there's a little piece of it. Well, actually, that's just a temp. That's just a sample spun oh, cone, awesome. yeah. So, yeah, we're doing all our Texas testing uh, at our facility down there. We've got a new vacuum system, so kind of going back and forth between there and kind of prior salons. Right, so this, the Draco engine is what is used in our Dragon spacecraft and uh, also in the upper stage of, of Falcon 9 for orbital maneuvering and re-entry. This is uh, our meeting room, VIP meeting room for uh, when we meet with our customers and um, if the CEO of a customer comes through or something like that. It's kind of cool because it's got this glass that, um, that goes opaque and we put a motion sensor on it so as you walk in the glass goes opaque. We, we named our conference rooms after the great um, rocket engineers and great scientists related to space. So we think they, they really deserve the credit for you know, enabling us to become a spacefaring civilization. So we're fairly um, science and engineering centric. Um, we have some, uh, some conference rooms named after astronauts too, but, but we try, try to focus more on the, the people that actually designed and built the rocket. That's where we have our server room, which has, um, I think, I don't know, somewhere in the order of uh, 500 processors for computing, uh, doing uh, computational fluid dynamics, finite element analysis, um, and uh, obviously all of our server storage for our 3D solid modeling and that kind of thing. It's, it's amazing how many processors you can get in a, in a small space these days with, with modern computing. Um, over there, um, this is under construction, but this is where our uh, mission control and launch control will be. So there's two, imagine like two big cinema screens. That's one of them and that's another one over there in the back. Um, and we can either have one giant image uh, or we can have four smaller images. So this whole thing is going to get laid out and there's going to be a, um, a glass tile floor which is illuminated from below um, and these cool desks with kind of blue lights. It'll look really pretty, pretty neat. So th this area is where we do all of our, our, our inspection. And it's, it's climate controlled and particularly controlled so, um, because metals expand and contract at different temperatures. So we always want to make sure this room is at exactly 68 degrees for doing our precision me measurement. And wherever possible, we try to design a part in, in, in 3D, to ma manufacture it in 3D, uh, and then to inspect it in 3D. So we minimize the number of 2D or 3D conversions. Um, occasionally, something's better in 2D, but mostly it's better in 3D. So here we are, and its uh, temperature just went down a whole lot because we're in our uh, precision control area. And what that machine is going to do is it's going to inspect uh, that part down to within thousandths of an inch to verify that everything was machined as it should have been. So what we have here is, th th this is a, that's a mass simulator of the Falcon 1 first stage engine. That's a mass simulator of the second stage engine over there. Um, and we have what's called a, a full hardware in the loop simulation of the vehicle. So from an avionics and electronic uh, standpoint and from a steering standpoint, 
the uh, flight computer and, and, and avionics think that they're flying the vehicle to space, and then we verify that they've done all the, the computer's actually done all the things it's supposed to do to, to make the rocket get successfully to space. So here we're in our avionics test facility. That's where we do um, test avionics of all sizes and shapes. So here we have a bunch of thermal cycling chambers that'll take parts and put them through um, uh, you know, 50 thermal cycles to verify that things are going to be okay. And the temperature environment in space is much worse than on the ground because you don't have the you don't have things you don't have air to even out the temperature. So you could have pre-hex up something could be in, in searing sunlight or blackest night. Um, and it's got to be able to handle uh, much more of a temperature range than it would on Earth. That's a, a thermal vacuum uh, cycler, so it'll test both. Uh, it'll test the part in vacuum going through the temperature cycles. That's our shaker room. It's got two t uh, small and a big shaker, so we can simulate the en enormous acoustic and vibrational loads that parts experience during the rocket takeoff. Um, and that's, that's really where things tend to break more than any other place. Good, we're just doing a little uh, um, video blog thing of, uh, oh, of what's happening. Yes, exactly. I'm Bjorn Taltan, I'm an avionics engineer. Um, what I'm doing here right now is to set up for a test upcoming of our second stage that we're going to send out to, uh, to Texas for a hot fire. Uh, what you see here is our electrical ground support equipment, a copy of what we actually have out on Quadrant on the launch pad. We do exactly a one-to-one -one replica here test out the stages before we send them out, so uh, we will be putting the stage to its paces tomorrow and we're just doing some preparatory work right now. Yeah, this is our um, electromagnetic interference test chamber. It looks vaguely like a torture chamber, but uh, it's, it, so it's basically set up so that when we, we can take our uh, uh, rocket or spacecraft and put, put the section here with, with all the antennas and radios, because it was like a dozen radios on, on the vehicle of various, or either transmitters or receivers of various kinds. And we're going to make sure they don't interfere with one another and that they've got good, um, we, can, we can sort of verify that the signal that's going out is going to be well received by the ground. And that's what we use this chamber for. It's really great. So what we're looking at over there, that's a quarter section of the Falcon 9 uh, uh, 17 foot diameter fairing. It's uh, 17 foot diameter, obviously, and and, and 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 50 feet long. It's capable of taking the largest satellites in the world, and it could actually literally fit a, a city bus in 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 that uh, fairing. It's that big because that's that's just a quarter section of it. Uh, it's made of uh, carbon fiber. It's very lightweight, um, and uh, uses the most you know advanced uh, uh, analytical techniques to uh, optimize the mass. So it's actually, I believe, the lightest lightest weight fairing of its kind as well. Uh, what we're looking at here is the uh, Dragon spacecraft pressure vessel. So it's almost done. Uh, we just need to do the, the forward and aft bulkheads. It's actually upside down right now, but you can see the main hatch, the, some of the windows, um, the the actual uh, common berthing mechanism where it berths to the space station is um, well right there um, because it would ordinarily be the other way around. Um, and this is an actual flight fidelity article uh, that's going to go through full qualification testing. Right. This area is, is uh, dedicated to our Dragon spacecraft assembly. So uh, you see various tools. That's for our heat shield, uh, making the composite parts in our heat shield. Um, over there is the, are the, the side the, the side shields and the nose cone. Uh, that's that's our that's the engineering test article, path, basically engineering pathfinder for our heat shield for Dragon, which is it's used a very advanced material called the phenolic impregnated carbon ablator, uh, which is the really the best heat shield material you could possibly have. And this is our engineering test article of our Dragon spacecraft. Um, so it's not flight fidelity. With the part we saw earlier, with, with we saw the welded piece, that's actually flight fidelity. But this was used as an engineering pathfinder to figure out how we might make Dragon. And um, actually, it's been very useful. Uh, on the right there is a, is a space station uh, berthing mechanism ring. So that's an actual ring that will mate to the space station. Um, there's another one on the Dragon itself, although the guide vanes aren't, aren't present. Here various pieces like uh, windows and pushers and frangible nuts and these are structural bulkheads, uh, structural reinforcing bulkheads. That's the little model we use to uh, determine splashdown loading. So here we are in the east high bay. So we have two very large high bays. We're in the east one right now. The east high bay is used for Falcon 9 uh, stage construction. 
um, and it's also temporarily used for storage, which is why you see various bits and pieces around, uh, behind me. This area under the high bay is used for Falcon 9 tank fabrication. So you can see behind me various uh, barrel sections for Falcon 9. That's actually serial number two. That completed tank is serial number two of Falcon 9. Serial number one is on the test stand in Texas. And then serial number three is in, in barrel sections on the floor. Um, and we're getting ready to uh, weld together those barrel sections and create our third uh, tank, which would actually be the first flight tank. So the first one's a run tank, second one's a qualification tank, and the third one will see flight. That's a Falcon 1 second stage bulge former. So that, that's a classic bulge forming tool that's used to take uh, two welded cones of, of uh, a typical refractory alloy metal like uh, plumbium hafnium alloy um, and belging it to a round contour, which is the uh, optimized contour for maximizing the efficiency of rocket thrust. This uh, cleaner here is also climate controlled, particularly controlled, and it's, it's, it's currently used for propulsion components as well as temporarily it's used to do composite layout. So that giant tool you see there is the mandrel that's used to create the composite parts for Falcon 9. So it creates the, um, the, the interstage, the dragon trunk section, and the, the propulsion section skirt. Um, anything that's a body diameter, uh, uh, a 12 foot diameter uh, cylindrical part. And um, that, that'll be moved over to the actual composites area when we have that uh, composites preparation room done, which will be fairly soon. This area is where we do the, uh, a lot of the Falcon 1 structural uh, assembly. So behind me, that's, that's a Falcon 1 uh, half section of a nose cone. Uh, that's the tool on which the nose cones are made. Uh, that's a, an avionics, uh, or rather a, a payload adapter cone. That's another payload adapter cone. Uh, that's a mandrel for the, um, the, the, the Falcon 1 uh, interstage, which is similar to the Falcon 9 interstage. In fact, the Falcon 9 interstage is just a scaled up version of the Falcon 1 interstage. This is a barrel section for Falcon 1 Flight 5. So we have Flight 3 uh, on the island um, in the Quadrant Atoll ready for launch, almost ready for launch. Flight 4 is going to be right behind that. We'll launch uh, um, uh, in about uh, three or four months' time. Um, and then this is Flight 5, which will launch sometime in the first half of next year. Uh, we have a lot of customers that are interested in that, and we expect to do a deal on that fairly soon. Um, and this area is also used for our composites of fabrication. So we've got a big oven there, which is used to put big parts and a small oven for smaller parts. Uh, what we're looking at here is a Falcon 1 upper stage. Uh, so you can see the, the engine and actuators and the, um, all that plumbing is for, for the attitude control system. Uh, we'll actually hold the pressure and bottles. There's a lot more stuff that goes in the back there, but you can see the tank and the little skirt at the back that holds a lot of the structure. That's for flight four, and then the flight five unit is, is right there behind it with obviously not much stuff done on it yet. This is a little snack section. Um, so we offer uh, people at work here, you know, get free snacks and drink, which is kind of a common thing in the internet world, but relatively unusual in the space world. And uh, we think if people are working late and, and, and then and they need a snack or something, they should be, have one readily available. All right, well, thanks for following me on the tour. That, uh, that was just SpaceX Hawthorne. There's actually a lot more um, other SpaceX facilities. We have a big test site in Texas. We've got a test, uh, a launch uh, pad at Cape Canaveral, a launch island in the Kwajalein Atoll. Um, and uh, we're looking for great people um, of, of all kinds to join the company. So if you're interested, please send us a resume. This area is used for uh, uh, the uh, engine components, or the major engine components. So you can see there's a nozzle, or various no nozzles at various stages of completion. Um, and then you can also see the copper things are the chamber liners. You can see the difference between that. that that's a, uh, a Merlin vacuum configuration, which has got a, a more spread out uh, uh, nozzle section. And that's the sea level configuration, which has got a, a sort of short um, copper nozzle. Those are the uh, propellant supply lines for Falcon 9. So the, the, they've got a single tank that manifolds out to nine engines, and then you've got fill and drain lines. So there's a total of, of uh, 10 sets of five inch diameter lines uh, that uh, manifold out to the various engines. So it's kind of like having like a nine cylinder engine car or something like that. Uh, um, this is our, our tube bending area. So there's a lot of tubes on a rocket, and we have a couple of automated tube benders that um, once you program a particular type of tube, it uh, could be a very complicated tube that looks like a crazy pretzel, and this machine can make that exact same tube every time perfectly.
All right, so here we are in the SpaceX machine shop. Uh, we have uh, geez, about 30 different machines of all sizes and shapes. Um, we have uh, wire EDM machines, which is electric discharge machining. We've got lathes, mills. Um, th there's just an enormous amount of, of metal sculpting that takes place to create the, the vehicle. Uh, you know, what a lot of people don't realize is that SpaceX makes about 80% of, of the vehicle by value in-house. So, you know, for the engine, raw metal comes in and out comes an engine. And um, so it's on these machines that, that the metal is taken from its raw form uh, and into the, the final uh, machine part form. So a part like this will come in as a forging and, and then it'll get uh, turned and milled and cut and eventually end up as, a, as an engine chamber liner. This is a new machine that just arrived. Uh, it's just being uh, tested and put through its paces before we start machining on it. They were actually uh, cutting the grooves on a chamber and drilling the holes that are necessary uh, for cooling. These are engine manifolds that connect the nozzle and the chamber. These are just various rocket parts, parts for the stages, parts for the engines. Those are some sumps. Uh, that's a tube for uh, the um, main oxygen supply line to Falcon 9. Uh, some more nozzle parts here. Another nozzle part, nozzle part. So that's our machine shop. It's actually, I mean, I haven't gone through everything because there's a lot of detail here and some of it's proprietary, but it gives you a sense for what it's capable. We've actually got uh, a lot of off-site machining that we do as well. We have a very high engine production rate here at, at SpaceX. Uh, this, year, uh, this year alone, SpaceX will make more uh, rocket engines than the rest of U.S. production combined. And next year, uh, we'll, we'll make more uh, rocket engines than any country uh, in, in the world. So um, that's a lot of rocket engines that all have to go through um, and be, be made very efficiently and made very accurately. Um, and that's what all these machines are, are for. So what we're looking at here is a Merlin 1C fully regeneratively cooled engine. It's getting ready to ship out to our test site in Texas to, to be part of the nine engine firing. This is actually the ninth and final engine uh, to be shipped out for that. Uh, and when we do that firing, it's going to be quite spectacular. It, Falcon 9 is the most powerful single core vehicle in the American fleet, and when Falcon 9 Heavy uh, debuts in, in about uh, two to three years, uh, that will be the most powerful vehicle um, in the world because the shuttle will have retired by that point. Um, so that's really quite significant. It's you know, the Royal equivalent of an, say an Airbus A380 or a, or a 747. This thing is the turbo pump. Uh, this, is, this is the chamber, the nozzle. Uh, and then there's all the supporting structure in there with the avionics and control valves. And here you can see the difference with a Falcon 1 configuration. So it's a sealed pyramid. The stage valving is contained inside that, that, that pyramid. Um, but other than that, it's substantially the same with the turbo pump and the chamber and nozzle. Very little difference really between the Falcon 1 configuration and the Falcon 9 configuration.